Symbolic History Through Sight and Sound, 11, Dante, Threshold of 1300. Over the 13th century horizon of France, England, Germany, Spain, Italy brings a dawn of human possibility. It was the start of morning, and the sun was rising up. Tempera dal principio del mattino, e il sol montava in su. Giovanni Pisano's Simeon, about 1290, hails the temporal incarnation, for mine eyes have seen the glory of thy people. Thus Virgil to Dante at the summit of purgatory. Your will is upright, free, and whole. It would be a fault not to do its bidding. Therefore I crown and mitre you, Lord of your own. Libero, dritto, e sano, e tuo arbitrio. Per chio te, sovra te, corono e mitrio. How far the spatial attack has moved toward Michelangelo. We measure against the Chartres Simeon of about 1220, looming into time, but not temporal, transforming time, flesh, stone, to the substance of things unseen, not in cask, nor yet in cow, not in battle, nor in bull, but on the road from Jericho, I come with a wounded man. That northern waking held the leanness of sacred surrender. Neck in bisso, neck in cucculla, neck in bello, neck in bulla, de Jericho sumweniens. Beside the pentameter weight of Dante, libero, dritto e sano, e tuo arbitrio. If the Divine Comedy is the Gothic cathedral of literature, it is a signed cathedral of prophetic self-awareness. Beatrice calls its author by name, Dante, while he says of his book, the sacred poem, to which both heaven and earth have set their hand, so that for many years it has made me lean. The powers this Gothic synthesis incorporates have crossed a threshold of personality, toward the free claim of life, love, and self-rule. Florence, 1300, jubilee year of Dante's passage through an eternal place, per luogo eterno, to be told thereafter in the exile which taught him how much the bread of others tastes of salt and how hard is the going up and down of another's stairs. He begins, nel mezzo del cammin di nostra vita, in the middle of the journey of our life, I found myself in a dark wood where the true way was lost. What dispensation does this prophet bring to pair him, as he says, with Aeneas, founder of Rome, and Paul, founder of the church, to whom it was also granted to descend and return, if not the poesis of blessing, fulfillment of Joachim de Flores' indwelling spirit, libertà va cercando, he goes searching liberty, That age a portal also in music, though this Ghirardella Scaccia, like much of what survives, is of the next generation. much force, as much ambition in the Cathedral of Notre Dame, but a force differently disposed to the individual and secular. Such the frame of the Thomistic Summa, in which Dante's poem shapes new heaven and earth, or the bearer solemnities of Perotin's Ars Antiqua. Whereas
as in the Ars Nova Caccia, spaced canonic entries fill over a trombone ground, fifths and triads of massive chords. <laughs> In 1296, when Arnolfo di Cambio took on the construction of the cathedral, whose magnified arcades would not be domed for more than a century, the city fathers proclaimed, the Florentine Republic soaring ever above the conception of the most competent judges, desires that an edifice should be constructed so magnificent that it shall surpass anything of the kind produced in the time of their greatest power by the Greeks and Romans. So Dante's Ulysses stars his followers to sail the globe. O oh, brothers, I told them, who through all chances a thousand perils have come to the West, for this small remnant of the senses vigil our fate allows us, let us here resolve not to deny the experience of knowledge beyond the sunset to the unpeopled world. Consider your race, the seed of your generation. You were not made to pass your time as beasts, but to hold the way of courage and of wisdom. It is in mystical transparency that the old Gothic most fulfills its abstract vision. A geometry of light Dante applies in his last canto to the Trinity. O luce eterna che sol in te sidi. Eternal light that always self-abiding, self-understanding and self-understood, alone and three in one burns, laugh and smiling. Te ami e arridi. That circle which as light in light appeared, as a reflected light of light begotten, under the circumspection of my stare, within itself and of its own pure colour, assumed the human likeness which we bear, so that my eyes were wholly fixed upon it. For that symbolic kaleidoscope, the church of Dante's Florence keeps the frescoed walls of Romanesque, but what Giotto paints there summons to impassioned drama. So in Dante all rungs of the eternal ladder flex with life and dying. Del Cassero stabbed. I ran to the marsh, and the reeds and mire so tangled me that I fell. And there I saw a lake form on the earth from my own veins. The fate of Pia in a single line, which Eliot cribbed, Siena mi fe, disfece mi, Maremma. So too the descriptive catches of Giovanni da Cascia, Florentine composer born five years after Dante. No. But the intensity of the Italian awakening, its life, loves and hates, is preserved as nowhere else in the Divine Comedy. Here, tightened in the Catholic structure, is the ferment of Guelph and Ghibelline, nobles, merchants, boldness as always, straightened in rigor. Into those timeless realms, the great Florentines surge with the defiance which is their grandeur and their sin. So Farinata rises from his burning tomb. Vidi la Farinata che se dritto. Look there, Farinata, who has raised himself up. From the girdle to the crown, you see him clearly. Already I had fixed my eyes upon him. He heightened his chest and lifted up his forehead, like one who had the whole of hell in scorn, and asked me proudly, who were your ancestors? 
as Dante meditated these words over the Tuscan town from which he was exiled, bore up the sunlit height of the Signoria's tower, breaking the inner silence like a clarion at dawn, the chivalric strength of the French castle in a new and assertively civic form. At this turn of the century, Florence, of all Italian cities most vigorous in economic and public life, becomes the center of advance for all Europe. The leadership of Paris is broken. We are swept forward, as by an eager crowd, into the forehall of Renaissance. O mente, che scrivesti ciò che ho vidi. O thought that wrote all that I saw. Here let your nobility be shown. What are the elements of that alchemy? A time X-ray might read them like layers of paint from the robed figures of Cavallini's Judgment, 1293. Cavallini, a Roman who seems to have influenced Giotto and been swayed in turn by the younger genius. They are classical, early Christian, Byzantine, northern Gothic, Italian rebirth. First, classical. Trying to climb the mountain, which is the beginning and end of joy, Dante meets the shade of Virgil, who lived at Rome under the good Augustus in the time of false and lying gods, al tempo degli dei false bugiardi. That meeting, that guidance, herald a new art. Aquinas' scholastic use and subordination of his classical master Aristotle turns to a drama of love in which Dante weeps at the very coming of Beatrice, of revelation, since it is then that Virgil, sweet father, must return to the noble castle of bondage, pagan virtues being only magnificent vices, Augustine, a happiness in this life based on a virtue as deceitful as it is proud. And what the angels chant is the saddest phrase from the Aeneid, on the death of Marsalis, at which it is said Octavia and Augustus broke into passionate weeping, Manibus date lilia plenis. Give us lilies with full hands. A lament lifted in Dante by an exclamatory O oh, into a mystery beyond grief or joy. Manibus O oh, date lilia plenis. Again with Giovanni da Cascia. have been lured by Dante's synthesis through early Christianity, again to the Roman peace, under which the institutions of his world, empire and church, took form. And as he was driven by those beasts of sin down through hell center before he could climb again, history was forced from Augustus' Virgilian altar and its human claim to virtue, down the spiral of denial, this Christian sarcophagus sent from Augustine's Carthage to Spain, to the ground that Virgil himself must voice in Dante, state contenti umana gente alquia. Let man rest content with how, not why. Could he have seen the whole, there was no need for Mary to give birth, and you have witnessed such whose longing is their grief. I speak of Plato, Aristotle, many more. At this he bowed his head, dispirited. Yet for three centuries before Dante, before this Giotto, speculative soul had been pushing up, bold as the Faustian vine described in Paradise Four, while Beatrice smiled and therefore questioning at the root of truth always puts up a living sprout whose nature drives us on from height to height. This sprouting with the divine comedy as with Giotto gives Gothic an enfleshment so ideal and sensuous
that the Florentine refinements of the next century hear Fra Angelico seem kindled. Thus, the early work of Dufay, this setting of Petrarch's Vergine Bella, ripens from Italian Ars Nova. In Angelico's symbolic death and assumption, the apostles below close the post and little space of Mary's die. But Christ in the center receives her infant soul, filia del tuo figlio. While to the right, the raised palm of eternal life points through horizontal closure to the spire of such a flamboyance as everywhere turns the paradiso into living flame. Baricelli would treasure that aesthetic mysticism to the end of the Quattrocento, nowhere more poignantly than in the drawings for the Commedia. Witness the ascent with Beatrice from the garden that crowns purgatory. In the context of the other designs, this initiates a leap from the busy crowding of the circles of punishment toward the unfinished blankness which would more and more attest the Empyrean. Had not Dante scaled those heights by the extrapolation of inadequacy? My sight greater than our speech. So snow in the sun dissolves the imprint. So with wind on the light leaves, the Sibyl's oracle was lost. Così la neve al sol si dissigilla, così al vento nelle foglie levi, si perdea la sentenza di Sibilla. In the Gothic charge skyward, we have distinguished around the French center two layers. With the 12th century, that burgeoning stretches the Romanesque, as the Artonian Kaiser Dome is stretched at Bamberg, or the Archaic Empire by Barbarossa, Henry VI, Frederick II, who looms still in Dante. This is the light of the great Constance, who from the second blast of Swabia conceived the third and ultimate energy. While in the 13th century, which at Cologne spills into the 19th, the high Gothic wave from the Ile de France points trellises of stone, such defiance of gravity as when Dante fixes his eyes on Beatrice, hers on the spheres, and his live body, lighter than air and fire, targets upward toward its happy mark. Have you not known that each of us is a worm born to form the angelic butterfly, a formar l'angelica farfalla? What had intervened was mid-century Paris, an ultimate lux nova, earth in the May morning and gothic smile, transparent with heavenly sheen. Did Dante recall the Saint-Chapelle, still fresh, still unrestored, when he saw paradise, first in its shadowy presages, son di lor vero umbriferi prefazi, a stream of sparks flowing between flowers? And I saw light in the form of a river, a river of fire between two shores, painted with spring's miraculous colors. And from that river fountained living sparks, and poured across the banks, and in those flowers immersed themselves, like rubies set in gold. He dips his eyes. That flow of God through time gathers to a timeless round. Nel giallo della rosa sempiterna, che si dilata ed ingrata e redole, odor di lode al sol che sempre verna, into the yellow of the eternal rose that dilates and breathes the gracious odor of praise in waves to the sun that always makes it spring, hushed and full of speech, I was drawn. As in all Gothic, the relation to earth is ambiguous. Judgment goes on sounding, from Elinant's Vers de la Marte to the English, earth out of earth is wonderfully wrought. Yet earth and heaven brighten together. Sacred motets dance like virelais. Virelais smile angel innocence. In both, triple runs melt with piercing delight into perfect chords. 
Florence. Here, from Adam de la Halle's Les Douce Regards de Madame. Compare an alleluia, where the alle and the luia are pulled apart and stuffed with psalite cum, alle psalite cum luia. Before the infection of high-rise, the town-dwarfing French cathedrals, a flamboyant tower perhaps, Renaissance angel or cupola crowning Romanesque and Gothic, spoke how small a post-Columbian age fulfilled the living medieval. No wonder buildings slacked off at the center, physical and spiritual space pre-empted. Yet the rational buttressing of faith which had reared Amiens and the Summa could not rest there. Reason in Siger and the Averroists must stake out its own realm. The world is eternal. The will acts from necessity. Happiness is in this life, and only philosophers are wise. Theses twice condemned at Paris. Yet Dante, Thomistic synthesizer, is so attuned to birth that he places Siger, condemned by the Inquisition in 1277, among the brightnesses of paradise. It is even St. Thomas, his bitterest accuser, who is made to introduce him. This is the eternal light of Siger, who, lecturing in the street of straw, demonstrated enviable truths. Also Joachim de Flores, Dante could hardly omit so arch a special a spirit, though his everlasting gospel had been variously charged. It had inspired a century of radical mysticism, unorthodox as Siegel's radical reason. Its richest art sign is the prophecy of the smile. The master of Naumburg's evangelist wreathes the coming in the warmth of now. So the German deepening of God with us from the hymns of Joachim's contemporary 12th century Hildegard of Bingen, through Berthold of Regensburg to Meister Eckhart in the time of Dante. There is an agent in the soul, untouched by time and flesh, which proceeds out of the spirit and which remains forever in the spirit and is completely spiritual. In this agent, God is perpetually verdant and flowering with all the joy and glory that is in him. For the now moment in which God made the first man, 
and the now moment in which I speak are in God the one and only now. A fusion Dante gives the aesthetic clarity of Florence. Duns Scotus taught at Oxford, Paris, and Cologne around the time of this 1300 Freiburg self-portrait. In him, the scholastic instrument sharpens to a pre-Kantian critique. The god Anselm found in reason is only cause of causes. His other attributes as trinity, mercy, goodness stand in contradiction and rest on faith alone. We cannot know God, but we can love him, and that is better than knowing. Only against the remembered conscious might of Giovanni Pisano and Dante do these northern harbingers pike thin. Long is I, and long is ho, long is we, and long is woe. The late century shift in poetry is always exemplified by the romance of the rose. Guillaume Delory's 1235 opening has the chivalric mystery which smiles even on the face of this Reims maidservant or in the songs of the loom, Bella Doeta. And now the wicket of that entry, a maid of grace unlatched for me, roses and wreathed her gold tiara, in her hand she bore a gay mirror, my name, she said, is idleness. I have no care but to live in bliss. 